There you go. Okay, just close that. Excellent. Well, uh, thanks everybody. Um, I hope uh, the sessions are still going really well and you're getting a lot of good value out of this. Uh, really excited to, to have uh, Ag part of our, our presentation today. It's their first time joining our conference and um, they've certainly put a lot of uh, um, great research and, and development into the precision ag world and have really become kind of one of the, one of the leaders. So a uh, company to make sure you, uh, you pay attention to. Um, people that can really help you uh, kind of fit that right role in, in improving your profitability and your sustainability. Our speaker today is Seth Crawford. He's responsible for ensuring a unified digital customer experience throughout the customer journey, including the integration and deployment of technology across Agco's portfolio of connected products. This includes Fuse, which acts as the company's global hub for smart farming, with a goal of delivering farm profitability improvement of 20% over the next five years by focusing on both yield improvements and cost reductions. Crawford also led a global team responsible for future development and marketing of precision farming tools, which includes implementation of fleet and farm services. Please welcome Seth. Take it away, Seth, thank you. All right, thank you. And it's great to be here. So when I ask farmers if they could have gotten more out of their farm each year, they often talk about the weather. There is more to winning in farming than optimizing an operation uh, beyond the weather though. I think we could all agree with that. But why is it that we don't talk about it more. Well, I think the reality is, in many cases, it can be quite hard for farmers out there, and in many cases, scary. So today, I want to talk through how to get the most out of what farmers leave on the table. My name is Seth Crawford, and I lead, lead Agco's Fuse Smart Farming Solutions Group, which includes guidance, machine controls, integration partnerships, and telemetry as well as our global digital customer experience organization, where we are focused on digitally transforming how Agco and our family of brands serve customers. I spent over 20 plus years working in the agricultural equipment industry, figuring out how to automate outcomes, achieve higher levels of output while maintaining waste or minimizing waste and making it easier and more reliable along the way. I wanna to talk to you today about making the most of your farming operation. We want you to get the most of the hard work you put in each and every day. And the reason that this is happening, in our opinion, is the lack of data that keeps you from turning good data into actionable insights when it truly matters. Well, first of all, we should talk about what we mean by data. And today, what we're going to refer to with data is what we're able to capture digitally as we're going through the year with our farming operation. And so to give you a few examples, the photographs of the field, uh, whether that's aerial imagery, drones, whatever you might have, uh, the measurements that are taken throughout the year, those are data. The maps that you create, uh, those would fall into the category of the data. And when we think about it, in the last five to 10 years, our ability to measure, analyze, and remotely share data has increased exponentially. Remember those days of having a desk drawer full of USB sticks? I could probably pull the drawer open right beside me now and have a bunch of them uh, jiggling around in there. In the old days, we had to take those off to our agronomist and then uh, deliver those and then have someone try to make sense of all that. Cellular and Wi-Fi capabilities have really transformed how we operate today. So you can leave those USB sticks in the drawer and we make it a lot easier than ever before. And instead of walking through a field, we now have satellite imagery of our fields available to monitor the health and the maturity of the crop through the years. When you need a closer look, we have drones that can be used for scouting. And then on our machines, as they go through the field, we have sensors that can help us monitor the crops while traveling through the field. 
You can pull up a variety of weather applications to understand the amount of rain by field rather than driving around and checking rain gauges. I remember that from being uh, a, all the way back to a young boy. It's one of the things I enjoyed the most, but I know for professional farmers today with how large their operations have become and how far apart their fields are, this just becomes impractical. And then it's all a matter of, did you capture the right information? And then was it digitally captured? And today it becomes super easy with the technology that's out there. So all of this, when you synchronize it and you document it, it helps us greatly improve in the area of collecting that data that can help us make meaningful insights into the future. So understandably, there's a mad rush for everyone to figure out how to quantify and develop sensors for anything and everything related to farm productivity. Because today, with increased bandwidth and enhanced computing power, we're able to process millions of data points quickly enough to make critical decisions in real time and automate tedious tasks. But we already have plenty of data capabilities today that can easily get a 20% improvement in net farm income over the next five years. Let's look at the most important ones on the crop cycle. The glue that holds all of this together is data continuity and precision technologies with machine control and guidance and telemetry being the foundation. You have to perform field activities precisely and you have to capture data from each step in forming your next move. This process also needs to be easy and reliable. Without the easy part, you might end up spending hours gathering and transferring and analyzing your data. So let's start by looking at planning. You need to know where you place that seed to come back to the crop and apply crop protection and in-season in fertilizer without running over your crop. Now this is common sense to most everyone here, but we can't forget the basics. And that enables the as applied data as we're going through and, and conducting these tasks and then capturing that information so we get to use it for the next task where we're operating within the growing stage and trying to do everything we can to protect and nurture that crop along the way. Here it's critical to streamline the data documentation as well. When we look at harvesting, yield data is the sum of all those hard decisions and actions producing the crop. It'll help inform the next season's decisions. But the data flow <clears throat> is, is absolutely critical as we go uh, through the season to make sure that we can then leverage that as we plan for the next season. Because it's not over when you've run the combine through the field because then we need to make sure we're monitoring and storage to make sure it stays safe. Then the agronomic planning really never ends, but it's the most intense in the months following harvest when you're considering the changes for the next season. You all have critical meetings with your advisors regarding soil health, seed, chemical, finances, labor, and whether or not to expand your operation. All critical decisions that you need to make and critical decisions that are aided by good quality information. Finally, during the slower months, the focus goes to making sure equipment is ready to go for the next season. For connected vehicles, you can look at things like machine performance and maintenance without having to be in the cab. And for many of you, I know uh, you're in the, the northern uh, part of the, the continent and uh, being in the cab in the winter months can be a challenge and being in an unheated shop can be even a bigger challenge. So with the connectivity and bringing this data into your farm office, you're better able to manage it than ever before. And you can see how you optimize all of your machines and all of your inputs to deliver the results that you are able to achieve. So if you have the data, you can quantify what good looks like. You can also see what uh, the potential is for generating more revenue by increasing the yield. Today, actual yields fall far short of what we know is possible. These are just some of the numbers if we look at corn production. As you can see on the slide, we know that from recent record winters that it's possible to get as much as 600 bushels per acre. Yet in the US, the average is 168. That's a huge gap. But how do we close that gap? You don't need every possible variable mapped out, but it is important to leverage the data that you do have to improve your agronomic performance in the future. 
we need to measure what we can and make sure we have a smooth handoff of that information so that we're not losing yield potential between steps or in a handoff between stakeholders. You might ask, what, what has technology delivered over the years? And so first, I'm going to frame up what this chart shows you. And so if you look at the view here, the years are across the x-axis, so across the bottom of the chart here. And on the left-hand side of the graph, we show the percent of planted area covered with some of the key drivers of yield growth. And then on the right-hand side, we show the average uh, bushels per acre that we've been able to achieve over time. And those are the green dots. So the, the, the lines that you see that uh, in some cases are, are trending left to right and moving up vertically on the chart, they, they relate to the left-hand percentage. Then the green dots relate to the right. Well, the first major enhancement was hybrid seed. You can see from the chart that it was adopted quickly and with about 10 to 15 years, it was fully adopted. Next, herbicides progressed from the early phases in the 1950s to full use in the 70s and 80s. With the green revolution, crop protection offered big boosts to yields once crops had less competition. Genetic mo genetically modified seed took off in the 1990s and had fully penetrated the market within about 10 years. And finally, machine control technologies were fully available in the early 2000s with the auto guidance products. And they've grown to cover about half of all the planted acres. With that precision ag technology in the form of machine control, it does help with yield improvements, but it also helps with input savings. Shown on the screen are just some of the most common inputs, the most valuable of which is your time. One thing that I've seen develop over the last two decades is the rising respect for your, your time and the rising respect for the professionalism you bring to farming. If it takes you four hours to analyze data that saves you $20, is it worth it? Probably not. And last, of course, you're bored in the winter because you can't travel anywhere due to COVID. But these are all inputs that you can reduce your consumption of while also increasing yield. If you have the right data, a few years ago, it would have taken an unbelievable amount of your time to analyze all the data. But luckily, you can automate input savings with things like guidance and variable rate control. Machine connectivity is helping to reduce maintenance costs by enabling preventive and predictive maintenance, as well as increasing productivity by preventing unscheduled downtime. The data also helps to ensure you have the complete farming system optimized as you go to the field. That is what we want to see overall, setting up a system that requires minimal intervention with some analytics built in so that the courses of action are narrowed. There are a lot of farm management software packages out there built around different requirements. Perhaps the most important thing in choosing one is compatibility because you need your data to be mobile because you work with employees or an agronomist or a seed or chemical rep or an equipment dealer. That's why we are dedicating so much effort to integration of our task data so that our customers don't have to waste a lot of time managing data to see what they need to do next. Now that we've seen where the data can be captured and what we're looking to optimize, let's look at the opportunities. When we talk about planning, we believe with proper singulation, leveraging technology and hitting the timing right with variable rate and multiple hybrid uh, planning technology, you can add 15 to 20% to your productivity. With fertilizer, fertilization and uh, pest care, the proper rate control and nozzle control and timing can add five to 10% productivity improvement. When looking at compaction management, well-planned controlled traffic farming, including all vehicles, environmental variables can add 10 to 15% to average yield. And when you look at predictive maintenance, you can reduce time to fix issues by up to 30%. And improving uptime and reducing unplanned maintenance can improve overall farm productivity because there's nothing more frustrating during the peak season than having key machines down.
A quarter century ago, we all started with yield mapping and it was automated by putting the sensing capabilities and GPS tracking on our combines. It wasn't the first time farmers tracked their yields, but it sure made it a lot easier. Yet the technology wasn't super reliable. It wasn't accurate, it was expensive, and it, wasn't, it was easier than doing it all by hand, which was really impossible, but it still wasn't easy. And it's incredible being able to map out the productivity of a field and get an inkling of where you were getting a good return on investment. Back then, it was really interesting. It, it, it drew on our curiosity and we wanted more. And that's what the industry overall has delivered. And it enables us to take the next steps. So as we fast forward to today, you can work with that fertility variance and soil type, and you can tailor your prescription to small grids within your fields, thanks to the data. It also helps that we have the variable rate capabilities and the GPS and the auto steering technologies that had to come before that. What once was done manually can now be done on the go with advanced sensors and actuation as machines run through the field. They collect the data, run that against what they're programmed to do, and then react accordingly. Smart machines are so important because they help you to prioritize your task objectives and automate outcomes. An example of this would be our momentum planner, which measures soil conditions 20 times per second and adjusts accordingly. That's a ton of data that's ingested in real time with a lot of in intervention without a lot of intervention necessary on the part of an operator. And I think we all know when it's a dusty spring day and you're trying to get that seed in the ground, the, the fatigue that sets in can be overwhelming. It's so with this technology measuring those conditions 20 times per second, you're doing much more than we could have ever thought of doing in the past. And it takes your capabilities up significantly and reduces that unwanted variance. So what can we do to realize 20% improvement in your net farm income over the next few years? What can you do this winter to get yourself set up for success in the 2021 growing season? We all likely realize that jumping from the average yield for our operating areas to the record yields of 600 bushels per acre won't happen overnight. What I hope you will take away is that you can gain 20% by focusing on making key improvements in how you can leverage data and put actionable insights to use. I talked about each step of the crop cycle and how important it is to focus on each one. And if you add those up, it was far more than 20%. But the key is, what do you wanna do on your farm to take the next steps forward? And each year is a new opportunity to reset the clock. And I challenge each of you to do that and make those steps forward. But the key is looking at the data points you already have and look at what other ones you might want to enable uh, with minimal effort or expense and get started leveraging that information you have and seeking to collect that additional data so you have a continuous improvement process. Farms are often talked about as being a factory without a roof. And if you're running a factory, you're always looking at continuous improvement products processes. And I know on your farm, with the pressures you have, you're also interested, but it has to come along and be easy. And that's where it's important that you take along the each step with the crop cycle, that you're looking at the data, and the, the steps are essentially talking to each other and informing those next steps. There are a lot of solutions out there that will help you do this. We have something that we call TaskDoc, which pushes the data to the cloud, and then we can leverage AgriLink, which will allow you to get it to any of over 40 farm management software packages. That way you're able to maintain control of your operations and your data, because a lot of your time is spent managing your data and especially transferring it and sharing it with your key advisors. And we wanna make sure this is easy. So automating this, uh, synchronization step is absolutely critical. So we don't have any data drops along the way. 
then you need to decide what else you want to prioritize. Base your decision on the data you have and where you anticipate the biggest possible gains or savings. With the data in your hand, you'll be able to consult key advisors for advice on what will make the greatest impact. And your advisors will be able to give you better information back with actionable insights because they're talking about the real facts rather than trying to remember so many data points from what you were working on throughout the entire season. Most importantly, look at automating as much as you possibly can. So the data is always up to date and not just at the end of a very long to-do list. The great thing about precision farming is that you don't need to have everything at once. You can add on bit by bit so that you've automated collecting all the relevant data and then also look at how you put that back to use. Each year you can make incremental steps forward in each step of the crop cycle. And we look forward to working with you on that. Gaining those input savings that we've talked about and the added yield potential in the next step of the crop cycle and the next season will enable you to add on and grow year over year. That's how you can get 20% or more from one year to the next. And with that, I'd like to thank you for the time today and open it up to any questions that you may have. Thank you so much, Seth. I really appreciate it. That was a great presentation. It's uh, good to see all the technology uh, and focus that, that AGCO is, um, is working on in, in improving uh, the customer experience, the focus on um, yield improvements, um, profitability, and sustainability. We're going to get to some questions now, Seth, if, you, if you're ready. Sounds good. All right. So questions. Um, first one is uh, improvements to productivity. What factors or, or data are being used for calculating the compaction factor? The way, we're, the way we uh, look at the compaction is we have a lot of studies in place. We put uh, soil sensors in, in uh, the ground and, and we've been very active in the space. Uh, maybe it's because of our, our deep roots in Europe where compaction is a, a, a significant issue. But then we're, we're looking at the, the machines we have running. So every, every pass, the, the tractor and the, the seeding equipment uh, the, the crop care equipment, uh, measuring that, uh, varying the tire configurations, uh, the load, the ballast of the machines, and then also, you know, through the harvest and then also through the soil prep phases. So we're, we're measuring at each step, uh, taking those variables in and, and trying to improve that along the way. And uh, that'll be uh, more and more of a focus as we go forward, uh, because we know how important that is to farmers. Great, thank you. Um, another question, uh, drought seems to be the biggest variable in yield potential. What can precision ag do to mitigate drought variability from year to year? Obviously a, a key one. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Are to... We haven't figured out how to make it rain yet, uh, <laughs> but uh, we won't give up trying. Uh, I think the key is the, the real question there is how do we use our technology to prepare the field appropriately? And then when we go to put the seed in the ground, how do we select the right depth? And then that uh, with technology that we have from our precision planting organization where we have the smart firmer, you know, having a sensor in the ground that can sense the soil moisture as we're putting the seed in is so critical and being able to adjust that seed depth uh, on that exact day, rather than setting it once and going across an entire field, you know, it, it does make a difference. And that's one of the things we see. And then throughout the season, being able to time the fertilizer uh, applications, making sure that, that we have that uh, taken care of, uh, that will all add to it throughout the year. And that's where a lot of our research and development spending is also going, is how do we have sensors on board that can monitor the conditions as they see it today, you know, with that plant, with that soil, 
and how do we adjust in real time to make the absolute most of it? And we're going to continue doing that. So if you're looking how to, to make the most of, of the technology through uh, or the, the droughts that we seem to have more and more often, uh, I'd, I'd encourage you to look more into the, that because that's where we're going to be spending our money uh, to be delivering products that will add value to your operations. Oh, that's perfect. Well, thanks for that. Um, when you talk about the gap potential, I guess this would be on yield. Why is there um, a difference in North America versus Europe? Uh, a potential between North America and Europe? I don't know that I... I said there was a, uh, I'm not sure that I follow that one perfectly and true as far as the, the difference between North America and Europe. Okay, uh, my guess would it be, is there a yield difference that, a potential that you're seeing? Um, or is it just, um, uh, is there calculations done differently, Canada the, or US to uh, Europe? Well, uh, for sure we do, we, our calculations differently. Most of it is is uh, our units measure, um, but uh, for sure the, the yields are are significantly different geographically. I mean, if you're talking Australia, um, you know we're we have uh, a different wheat yield than North America versus Europe. A lot of that you know relates to the moisture, the soil type, um, the the, the seeds we're using but uh you know that's one of the things that that we're adjusting and and that's probably one of the biggest reasons we see all of the the companies out there offering different products by geography to make the most of it um the the good thing is you know i i think that's what what we try to do is leverage our research that we have on our different research farms in the different geographies around the world to understand uh, the, the differences in the yield, to understand the different uh, growing conditions, and then understand how our products interact uh, and, and impact that yield. So uh, we have our test farms, our future farms. We have one in, one in Africa. We have one in Germany or in Switzerland, uh, but not too far from Germany. So it's right in, in the border area there. And then we have our, our our Precision Technology Institute in uh, Illinois that we leverage for precision planting. And all of those are great opportunities for us to continue to test as well as our interactions with universities on, on what uh, we can do to grow yields overall. And the other key piece is reducing the variance. Uh, you know, as we try to field a, a global population growing to 10 billion people, uh, one of the big things we need to do is reduce the variance uh, that we see in from operation to operation, and, and we can do that with the data we have coming in now. Perfect. Um, you had a, um, a slide up earlier uh, where you had fuse in the middle and all the uh, different you know aspects as far as sensors, uh, yep. monitor, monitoring um, equipment. Uh, where do you see the biggest um, kind of growth or opportunity in those parts of the th of uh, that circle um, coming down the road? Well, as far as technology to put it to use today, uh, I see where we are with our, our planting. As far as the technology that we have about the, the singulation and the variable rate and, and then being able to seed with multiple hybrids as, as you go through the field, that's probably one of the areas where I see the greatest opportunity in the, in the near term. Uh, because a lot of that technology is out there and can be put to use. Uh, the other area is just the, the overall use of variable rate. You know, I showed the, the one slide about the technology adoption. And I think to most of us, it's still amazing that guidance is still at a 50% overall penetration level when we talk about the, the acres covered. And then if you don't have guidance, uh, you're not going to have variable rate and section control which can enhance your yield and reduce your costs. So those are other areas that, you know, especially if you're just getting started, just taking advantage of that and, and even doing some simple prescriptions just to get started with a variable rate can really uh, jumpstart some of your capabilities 
and and enhance uh, your performance uh, over from past years because uh, every farmer can tell you about the good spots on the farm and the, the bad spots. I mean, it's, you know, it, it went all the way back to grandpa and their father and, mm -hmm. and now they're farming that way. And, and in some cases, I know some of you that are, are tuned in today probably are very aggressive in managing every zone. But the reality is that's still a small sub-segment. And, and as uh, equipment providers and those of us working in agriculture, I think we need to really try to move to get the, the, the products we offer to be easier to use uh, to, to the question that came in, Andrew, because that will help us you know, close that gap and achieve those higher levels and help customers uh, get to that you know, 15 to 20% improvement in, in the, the seeding uh, period. And then also you know, the five to 10% improvement in the crop care uh, period uh, for their crops because we've got to have the technology available, but then we also need to make sure it's reliable and easy to use. Yeah, I think, um, and that's pretty much kind of the reason why we started this conference eight years ago is that there was um, certainly technology out there that was uh, great, but uh, the adoption of it was very low and it was a confusing and cumbersome system. Uh, that has improved massively over the last eight years and, and uh, really excited because we can see, and obviously you're, you're committed to the potential, but there's still people that are kind of uh, still uh, kind of intimidated by getting involved in this. You know, as you mentioned, there's only 50%. I didn't know it was that low using a GPS. Um, how, how do we get over that, that barrier and, and get more people um, using this is it case studies? Is it just, um, uh, just talking face to face with people? How do we get that working better? Um, what's your thought there? Well, I, I think a couple of things are coming along that can really help us. Uh, you know, one is I think we need to make the technology easier to use and and reliable. You know, there there are all kinds of customers that can say I adopted the technology or I paid you know, ten thousand dollars, whatever it might be, for this technology. And it just didn't work. And they just they just shut it off because I said it's it's go time. We got to get this done. So we've got to make sure uh, that's uh, there. We also need to make sure from an OEM standpoint that we're engaging with our our dealer channel to make sure that they're up to speed and and able to deliver this and be a strong consultant for a customer to make sure they're able to get the most out of the technology. And then what's really emerged over the last few years is connectivity. And with connectivity and telemetry we're able to see which machines are operating at their peak performance, uh, both uh, technically from the machine standpoint, but also agronomically. Are we getting the seed in the right spot? Do we have any blockage? Does a customer have a blockage that they may not be stopping for? Those types of things are there that weren't there in the past. And so that enables us as OEMs and our entire dealer network to serve as uh, trusted advisors for customers to be able to look at it. Because if, if I would ask a customer normally, do you get the most out of your, your fleet of equipment? Most of them will say, well, absolutely. You know, we're, we're getting everything out of it we possibly can. And sometimes they say, oh, even we're getting more than every neighbor we have. But when we look at that at the macro level, we can see uh, on average, customers are probably getting between 70 and 80% out of their machine but then we can intervene. And with the monitoring centers that we have set up, we're able to engage with customers and talk them through setup changes and some optimization steps that can really take them up to uh, the, the theoretical maximum performance. And that's one of the things that if customers are out there and, and they aren't buying uh, a connected machine today, that's obviously one of the things that uh, we think will enable uh, greater capabilities going forward. And it's one of the reasons we're building connectivity in all of our large products now uh, out of our factories, uh, focusing on the, uh, the, the, the key growing areas of the world. That's great. Um, a lot of talk on, um, on the 5G uh, network systems that's coming down the pipe um, or actually is in some cities now. Um, we anticipate this will be probably rolled out uh, around North America over a fairly quick time. Um, pricing will come down considerably. Um, and from what I'm hearing for the rural world, um, cellular will be more 
will be faster than using uh, Wi-Fi. What, um, what is Agco and Fuse doing as far as that part of uh, the 5G world and, and how will that improve uh, the pro uh, pro promotion, I guess? Well, it, it, as I mentioned during the presentation, you know, there's so much data we're collecting today and we used to use thumb drives to transfer their data cards. Now we'll be able to open up even more data collection. So every pass through the field will be a task to execute the job precisely, but it will be a major data collection uh, task uh, as well. And then we'll be using that, flowing that data in. And with 5G, it'll make that super seamless. And uh, that's one of the things that has been limiting is, is building in onboard memory to capture it all and then getting all that information offboard. If, if you'd be in a, a, a strong 5G area, you wouldn't need to worry about that because you'd be able to stream uh, both ways uh, up to the cloud and, and back down in, in very short order. So it really opens up a, a, a number of opportunities that we haven't had in the past uh, to optimize the whole operation and not just to get the, the data to the cloud, but to get it to your trusted advisors. So if you're seeing something, you can get it to them uh, in real time. So you can get the feedback of, hey, I'm seeing this in the field. Here's what I have. They'll be able to come right back uh, with information that we wouldn't have had in the past. And, and, you know, I see the day where we'll be able to catalog, you know, every plant uh, every year uh, with, with scans and pictures of every stage of the growing season every time we go through the field. And it's pretty exciting that we're getting to the point where we can truly manage a field plant by plant. Yeah, that, that's pretty amazing for sure. Um, what portion of precision ag, of the precision ag world requires some nudge in terms of investment to help it, help it along, I guess? Um, well, uh, I don't know that there's, I think the customers in a, in a recent study that I read, you know, most customers inherently believe there's a, a five to 10% advantage by leveraging precision ag. So it seems that, you know, in, the, in the, the farmer's minds today that it, they, they get it, they know it's there. And there's no doubt there are uh, basic economics out there as well about you know, just how much can I reinvest? Uh, you know, what's my capital expenditure year to year to enhance my overall operation? And I think that's one of the, one of the reasons why we've seen such growth in the retrofit business is because customers don't want, want to buy a complete new machine. Maybe their machine's only three or four years old, but they do want the latest technology on it. And so that's where we offer a, a nice portfolio of products to be able to take that productiv productivity up to the next level. Uh, and, and that also lowers the entry point to get into it. So instead of maybe a three or $400,000 uh, capital investment, maybe they're able to, to optimize their current machine for under $100,000 and, and make the most of it. Yeah, certainly makes a big difference. Uh, one quick question. Someone, you had mentioned about the 50% adoption rate of guidance. Was that uh, US numbers or is that global numbers? Where, where does that sit? That was a North American number. North American numbers, okay. Um, I guess uh, another question that uh, we, uh, we always have to be aware of is, you know, as this uh, information and data transfer becomes uh, more common base, uh, how do we manage uh, data security um, and cyber attacks? What's, yep. the, what's your thought on that? We, you manage it with real smart people and lots of money. Um, <laughs> and, and unfortunately, it's the lots of money part because it costs all of us involved in, in this call today when, when that's, that's the situation. But we take that very seriously. And, and so uh, we, you know, with our cloud providers, uh, and then those designing our machines, and, you know, it goes from protecting the our our the machine uh, at the source. So even you know when you have a connected machine, you have to make sure you have that hardened so that you don't have hackers accessing uh, the machines there. And then also as we flow it to the cloud, uh, we want to make sure that's secure. We also want to make sure it's easy for the customer to access their data and share it with who they want. Um, so it's a balancing act there of, okay, how do we make that easy and that they get the rights to, to, to share that, 
but we have it locked up tight, storing it for them because we believe the data is the customers. And if they don't consent to data collection, we don't collect the data. And if they decide later they don't want it stored, then the data is, is deleted and it's gone. Um, and so we have the, the procedures in place to be able to do that. And we take that very seriously because we know the value of data to agriculture and growing our capabilities we also know the level of trust the customers put in us uh, as far as helping them collect the data, helping them transfer the data, store the data, visualize it, share it with their uh, trusted advisors, and then get it back to the machine for their next task. So there's a lot involved in it. And so we're leveraging those experts in the field, uh, doing all we can to keep our customers' uh, data safe and protected and so they can make the most of it going forward. That's great. I think um, certainly when, uh, maybe not when we first started this conference, but uh, a few years in that the, the data, who owns the data, who's gonna share data was really a, a big question. Um, and um, I always been, always been um, of the opinion that, you know, it's, it's to your benefit not to share data, because then that just, hurts you in the long run. So I think getting that message out is really important that people, that uh, growers, because there's still growers out there that say, uh, I don't want to share my data because I don't trust them. So building that trust is really important. And I think uh, getting that message out and, and as media, it's our responsibility to keep that message going as well, uh, because we want to we want to improve this for everybody as well. Um, I think Looks like that is about it for questions, Seth. So uh, on behalf of myself, um, everyone who joined in um, and everyone from farms.com, thank you so much for joining, making a great presentation. And um, hopefully uh, if you have any other questions, um, the ICO team is around um, at a booth here and you can also connect with uh, Seth directly if he's he's around and, and message him through the feed loop. Um, platform. So Seth, thanks again. And uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you again soon. That's a pleasure joining you and I'll be joining the feed loop uh, session to answer any questions there as well. So thank you very much. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks everybody.